Good morning. Welcome to Christ Church Cathedral on this beautiful, beautiful temperate summer day. For those of you who are visiting with us, welcome. We hope you will feel comfortable. If there's anything that you need, please see one of the greeters or there is a warden on duty, Wendy, at the very back there uh, in a pink today. And so uh, if you have any questions or you need to be directed to the facilities, they are your, they are your ticket. Our Dean and Rector, uh, Tim Dobbin, is with, away with his family currently in New Zealand and he'll be away for at least another week. Our Director of Music, Bruce Burbage, is away in the UK. He returns on Tuesday, but the bench is being aptly occupied by Bruce Cross, who is no stranger to us. And we are delighted to have um, Jenny Darling to help us with the music uh, this morning. Your presider is the Reverend Canon Dr. Sharon Hall. She will also be your preacher. Yours truly is uh, the deacon assisting the Reverend Canon J. Lafay, for those of you who do not know me. We hope that at the end of the service, you will stay with us to have some refreshment in the back. And we call the back part of the church like that the narthex. So people, you'll hear that term. That's what that is. It just means the back. And uh, please do uh, stay to join us for some, uh, some refreshment. If you're so inclined, we'll do the territorial acknowledgement, which you'll find on the uh, front page of your uh, leaflet. Everything that you need for the service today is in your bulletin. Communion will be administered at one station, as is customary in the summer. It will be a standing station right here with one bread and two wines. We do serve communion in both kinds, but if you only want one or the other, that's perfectly acceptable. Either is and constitutes a full communion and everybody is welcome at our table. Territorial acknowledgement. We acknowledge that we gather today on the lands occupied by the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe nations at the time of the creation of the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement. We honor and respect these nations and commit ourselves to walk together gently upon this land. We take a moment of silence before the service and I'd ask that you have any electronic devices that you please put them into silent mode.
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Just take a moment to gather our thoughts and prayers. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Colleague for this Transfiguration Day. Almighty God, on the Holy Mount you revealed to chosen witnesses your well-beloved Son, wonderfully transfigured. Mercifully deliver us from the darkness of this world and change us into his likeness from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. A reading from the book of Daniel. Daniel wrote, As I watched, thrones were set in place, and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousand served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. As I watched in the night visions, I saw one like a human, human being coming with the clouds of heaven, and he came to the ancient one and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the second letter of Peter. We did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory saying, this is my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. This is the Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to the Evangelist Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly, they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with them. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent, and in those days told no one of any of the things they had seen. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you with faith, in the love of God, in the way of Jesus, and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. One of the most celebrated new movies to reach the theaters this week is the movie Oppenheimer about the creation of the atomic bomb. The story is not new, but it has grabbed the attention of people today 
because the world is watching yet another war in which the atomic bomb is a threat. Vladimir Putin in Russia has issued veiled threats that he might use a nuclear bomb to win the war in Ukraine. Other countries, such as Iran and North Korea, see the atomic bomb as their means to dominant power. I have not yet seen this new movie, but there have been several documentaries and films over the years to chronicle the making of the bomb because it was a life-changing event. Several years ago, I watched a movie on television which has the unusual title, Fat Man and Little Boy. This 1989 movie reenacts the Manhattan Project, which was the secret allied endeavor to develop the first atomic bomb during World War II. The purpose of the project and the focus of the film was the race to build the bomb before the Nazis could do so. The movie is not a documentary. It is a dramatic presentation of the lives of men and women who were secretly sequestered in a military base to win the race to have the bomb. The pressure on the scientists was unrelenting. The military leader in charge was General Leslie Groves, portrayed in the movie by the famous actor Paul Newman. His belief that the bomb was necessary to win the war was absolute and unwavering. The scientists came under the direction of Robert Oppenheimer, were brilliant in solving the scientific problems but as they grew closer to creating the bomb, some of them became concerned about the destructive power they were unleashing on the world. Questions were raised as to whether possessing the bomb would be a sufficient deterrent to end the war so it would never be used again as a weapon. The movie ends with everyone watching in awe at the spectacle of the blazing mushroom cloud. The odd title of the movie, Fat Man and Little Boy, were the code names for the two bombs dropped on the Japanese cities in, uh, of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945. That movie in 1989 reminded everyone that the atomic bomb was created by people in a time of fearful reality who wanted peace but created unimaginable power for war. The world continues to exist under the cloud of the atomic annihilation. The potential benefit to humanity of nuclear power and nuclear medicine is overshadowed by the destructive power of two bombs dropped on ordinary people almost 80 years ago. In 1948, on Armistice Day, another American general, Omar Bradley, stated, and I quote, we have grasped the mystery of the atom and rejected the Sermon on the Mount, end of quote. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. On August 6, 1945, the first atomic bomb was dropped on the city of Hiroshima. We remember that day as a frightful moment in history. Also on August 6, in our Christian calendar, we honor the transfiguration of Jesus. And as you did heard, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up to the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed 
and his clothes became dazzling white. A cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. On the date of August 6, we have two images to remember. The enormous mushroom cloud over Hiroshima and Jesus transfigured in glory on the mountaintop. The atomic bomb created a blinding light of burning heat. Jesus was transfigured in a dazzling light before his disciples. These are mirror contrasting images of life and death. The transfiguration of Jesus revealed God's presence and power to bring healing and hope to humanity. The hope of Jesus is peace and love among all people, even among enemies. A hope for peace and love did come out of the ashes of Hiroshima in the heart of a child a young girl named Sadako Sasaki. She was two years old when the atomic bomb fell on her city. She survived along with her mother and father and five-year-old brother. But 10 years later, she was diagnosed with leukemia and given about one year to live. Sadako found hope in an old legend which said, Fold 1,000 paper cranes, and your wish will come true. She began to fold paper cranes with determination. The cranes did not prevent her death in 1957, but became a worldwide symbol for peace. After death, her classmates decided to make a monument in the Peace Memorial Park in Hiroshima, not only for Sadako, but for all children who died from the atomic bomb. In 1958, the Children's Peace Monument was completed. On top of the monument is a statue of Sadako being lifted up on the wings of a graceful crane the inscription on the monument reads, let no more children fall victim to atomic bombing. The paper crane has become a symbol of remembrance for the suffering and destruction caused by atomic warfare. The need for peace and peacemakers is as urgent now as it ever was. We still live in the shadow of the mushroom cloud. The disciples Peter, James, and John wanted to stay on the mountaintop to build shrines and live in the glory of the transfiguration. But Jesus led them back down the mountain into the world of human reality, a world where peace is hard work and often comes with sacrifice. It is up to us today and every day to sustain that hope for peace, to believe there is a future for children, because with God's help, we will strive to be peacemakers and children of God. So may it be. Amen.
Will you stand as you are able? We say together the Apostles' Creed. Let us confess our faith as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Please take your preferred posture for prayer. The congregational response to transforming God will be hear our prayer. Transforming God. Gracious God, today's readings have told us of your power to change us. We pray that you will help us to find our own mountaintops and to be attentive to you acting in our lives. Transforming God. We pray for your church. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the province de l'Église Anglican de Congo. In the Anglican Church of Canada, we pray for the Right Reverend Helen Kennedy, Bishop, and the clergy and people of the Diocese of Capel. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada, we pray for the Dean, Council, and congregations of the Northern area of the Synod of Alberta and the territories. In our own Diocese of Niagara, we pray for our Bishop, the Right Reverend Susan Bell, St. John Ridgemount, the Reverend Daniel Bennett, Rector, the Deacon Roderick McDowell Deacon, and the people of that parish. Transforming God, We pray for our government leaders, including Charles, our King, Mary, our Governor General, Justin, our Prime Minister, Doug, our Premier, and Andrea, our Mayor. Imbue them with strength and a vision of peace, justice, and democracy in these unsettling times. Transforming God. As a community, we pray for the chronically ill, those in long-term institutions, and any who suffer from disorders of any kind, and those who care for them. Transforming God. In our parish cycle of prayer, we pray for Joan Knight, Lisa Fahey and John McKay, Michael Fitzpatrick, Audrey Fleming, Anne Fricker, Shirley Fricker, Joan and Bill Guiver, and Heather Glass. We also pray for all of those who ask to be remembered in our collective prayers, whose names are listed in the Chronicle. We especially remember Anne Harvey, who is recovering in hospital. Transforming God. Just as we seek to be changed, help us to be instruments of the change and transformation of the world that's required to bring your kingdom into being. Amen. Jesus said, before you offer your gift, go and be reconciled. As brothers and sisters in God's family, we come together to ask our Father for forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. 
We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. Glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Would you stand as you are able? Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also so with you. Please share a sign of peace with your neighbors. Holy God, receive all we offer you this day and bring us to that radiant glory which we see in the transfigured face of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise 
It is indeed right that we should praise you, gracious God, for you created all things. You formed us in your own image, male and female, you created us. When we turned away from you in sin, you did not cease to care for us, but opened a path of salvation for all people. You made a covenant with Israel, and through your servants Abraham and Sarah gave the promise of a blessing to all nations. Through Moses, you led your people from bondage into freedom. Through the prophets, you renewed your promise of salvation. Therefore, with them and with all your saints who have served you in every age, we give thanks and raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. God, source of life and goodness. All creation rightly gives you praise. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He healed the sick and ate and drank with outcasts and sinners. He opened the eyes of the blind and proclaimed the good news of your kingdom to the poor and to those in need. In all things, he fulfilled his gracious will. On the night he gave himself to death, our Lord Jesus Christ took breath. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, his perfect sacrifice destroys the power of sin and death. By raising him to life, you give us life forevermore. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died, died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ will come again, recalling his death, proclaiming his resurrection, and looking for his coming again in glory. We offer you, Father, this bread and this cup. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts, that all who eat and drink at this table may be one body and one holy people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ, our Lord, through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your, your will, will be done, done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever.
We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We, we being many are one, one body, for we, we all, all share, share in the, the one bread. bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
She sits like a bird brooding on the waters, hovering on the chaos of the world's first day. She sighs and she sings, mothering creation, waiting to give birth to all the word will say. She over earth, resting where she wishes, lighting close at hand or soaring through the skies. She nests in the womb, welcoming each wonder, nourishing potential hidden to our eyes. She dances in fire, startling her spectators, walking thorns of ecstasy when dumbness reigned. She wins and inspires all whose hearts are open, nor can she be captured, silenced, or restrained. For she is the spirit Savior in eternal love. She is the key, opening the scriptures, enemy of apathy and heavenly Let us pray. Holy God, we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. May we who are partakers of his table reflect his life in word and deed, that all the world may know his power to change and save. We ask this in his name. Amen. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the announcement. I commend all the announcements that are in your chronicle. I'm not going to reread them. I think you're quite capable of doing that yourselves. Uh, but just to underline that there is an art crawl on Thursday, uh, Friday night and that there will be lots of artisans out on the sidewalks and there will be some displays to commemorate um, that awful event many years ago. Thank you very much, Jenny, for your lovely singing this morning and obviously to Bruce Cross, who is no a stranger to us. And as I said, Tim is away for at least another Sunday. And I believe next Sunday, the Venerable uh, Lynn Corfield is uh, going to keep us in order. Is that right, Lynn? Yeah, good. All right. Um, Tricia Kalantari, our uh, parish administrator, is away now for two weeks. But your honorary assistants, uh, uh, headed up by Sharon, uh, we're attempting to keep everything running smoothly while um, <laughs> she is away. So if there are anything that you need or any pastoral emergencies, please contact the number. And uh, Sharon will coordinate uh, all of us honorary assistants to make sure that anyone gets the assistance that they need. You will have heard in the prayers uh, that Anne, we are praying for Anne Harvey. Uh, she had an unfortunate heart attack um, uh, uh, yesterday, uh, or two days ago, uh, but she's fine. Uh, she's resting comfortably in the cardiac unit at Sudbury Hospital. I, ha um, I have texted her, she's cheery. It was a big scare, but she is uh, stable and um, just now waiting to get the go-ahead to um, return back to the cottage. Thankfully, all her family were at the cottage, 
when it happened, Emily and Patrick and uh, Peter. And so that was actually a good thing because sometimes she is there alone, but this time uh, she was not. But uh, as you can imagine, I, I don't know, the cottage is uh, very remote. I was there um, a couple of weeks ago and um, it's about a five hour drive from here. And then you park in a marina and it's a half an hour boat ride to get to the actual cottage because it's, it's uh, water access only. And so um, when something like this happens, it is a bit of a panic because you have to get in the boat, phone ahead, the ambulance can meet you at the, at the uh, marina, but you have to get there first. And wouldn't you know it, just as they were about halfway through the boat ride, the boat died. Oh and so thankfully, and this is another miracle because the cell service up there is spotty at best. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I think it depends on whether the satellite is aligned. They were thankfully able to get their neighbor who immediately responded and was able to take them uh, by, by, uh, to the marina where she was taken by ambulance to Little Current restaurant and then airlifted, helicoptered uh, to Sudbury where she had an angioplasty and a stent put in. So, but all is well, thank God. So that's why we were praying for her, but please continue to remember her um, in, in your prayers. Uh, Sandy would like to uh, tell us about some more cushions. My story is a bit more mundane, I think, after that. Um, it's appropriate on the Feast of Transfiguration that I should be talking about the transformation of the cushions that are in the stores for canons and others. Um, if I held up the previous one, it would be kind of flopping all over the place. This is one that has been washed, vacuumed inside and out, restuffed, and we invite any of you who would like to see what the outcome of the work is to come up afterwards. There's one in this stall here, one in the same stall on the other side, and a number in the canon stalls afterwards. Um, you may be tempted after this to move from those chairs to the canon stalls, I think, but... Uh, no, no, you can't do that. So thank you very much, and I wish to thank all those who have been involved in this project, most notably Ken Patterson and Jen Early most recently, but previously um, Ed Early and Jim Newman as well in the early stages. So thank you all. Uh, thank you uh, very much, Sandy. And th those uh, 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 refurbishment of those cushions, which is vital actually to keeping them because they were getting rather sorry, sorry looking, is paid for from the general memorial funds. These are funds that when somebody dies or there's a special occasion like an anniversary or a significant birth, that um, people give money in, in memorial to uh, individuals. And so we use that money for longer lasting things in the cathedral, particularly for things liturgical. So it's a great way to use that money and I encourage you to donate memorials uh, and because the money is used in that way. Now, one last thing before I ask Ken and Sharon to give us a blessing, I'd like Randy to come forward, please. Randy told me before the service that it's his birthday tomorrow. It's, 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 um, he's older than me by not that many years, um, but we'd like to wish uh, Randy uh, a happy birthday and I will just uh, give, you a, give you a blessing. Blessing, my dear friend, and God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and preserve you and keep you into eternal life through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. Will you stand as you're able for the final blessing? God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, establish, strengthen, and settle you in the faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day, now and always. Amen. Amen.
my brothers and sisters, go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be to God.